You might have heard of a website called OnlyFans over the last year or so. OnlyFans is one of the most exciting tech companies in the world. OnlyFans allowed the content creators to set the price and gave them a generous 80% stake for every dollar they made. There's also a generous tipping system as well. OnlyFans just became the single groundswell for a lot of adult performers, a lot of the industry, in the same way that businesses like Zoom became a part of our meeting culture, in the same way as payment businesses like Stripe. OnlyFans just became huge during the pandemic. People craved intimacy, people craved connections with people, and OnlyFans delivered that. OnlyFans delivered it well. OnlyFans has just found a completely new audience of people who are willing to pay money for access to models, uh, adult performers, but also chefs and celebrities. They're keen not to be known as an adult site or a porn site. They don't like those words. I'm just kidding. That is not the kind of content you're going to see from me. With these celebrities jumping aboard, there is a genuine move away from adult entertainment and pornography towards being a social media site that just allows famous people to monetize on the content they already create, they already give away on Twitter and Instagram. And that's a new market. So OnlyFans was founded in 2016 by members of the Stokely family, an Essex-based family here in the UK. Tim Stokely is very much the face of OnlyFans. He's the CEO. He is the person who gives statements. He is uh, thoroughly believable as the face behind OnlyFans. Behind the scenes, you've got Guy Stokely. Now, he's a kind of old school city of London, a retired banker. He worked at Barclays in his time. He's the authority figure behind OnlyFans. The, the majority owner of OnlyFans is Leonid Rudvinsky, a 39-year-old Florida-based tech entrepreneur. Rudvinsky is actually one of the richest men in porn ever. Neither Larry Flint nor Hugh Hefner were ever Forbes billionaires. We know he was born in Ukraine, he moved to the US, and he studied economics at Northwestern University. Before OnlyFans, Rudvinsky was most famous for My Free Cams, a cam service that was live action for adult performers. What we know about Leonid Rudvinsky is scarce. My colleague came to me and said, hey, we've got this new billionaire. And, you know, we, we don't really know anything about this guy. So I do the obvious thing, like, you know, Google them so I can start looking at his more benign looking ones. Then there are his other known websites, his porn websites. Uh, my hunch was, and it turned out to be a right hunch, was that when Leo was a lot younger, maybe he was a bit more careless than he is today. I also have um, a couple of tools that I can use to start looking at their internet footprint. This brings back like a thousand results. There are these other sort of really strange websites and they're essentially, um, they all have a um, password or passes or something like that in, in, in the name. They're essentially promising lists and lists and lists of passwords for paid for websites. You suspect he never actually really hacked into websites or illegally uh, retrieved them. Partly because his own company in, in a court document said, the way we make money essentially is is these porn sites for whom we offer free access to, they actually pay us money every time they get a click. But there was something else which, which was much more concerning and, and a lot more eye-catching, which was um, some of these password sites were offering logins to what were described as um, underage pornography. Um, even some referencing uh, models um, under the age of you know, 10, 11 in some cases. Um, so pretty gruesome stuff. He knew that paedophiles were out there and he knew he could make money from them by getting them to click. And when they did click, they didn't get that illegal content they were after. They uh, just got taken through either to other password sites on illegal content. That seemed to be the nature of his business. And this was happening sort of from the late 1990s to the mid 2000s. In the mid-2000s, Radvinsky caught onto the craze for leaked celebrity sex tapes, even if they didn't exist. He registered sites for Ben Affleck, Jennifer Lopez and Britney Spears. He did this because the websites would still drive traffic, whether or not there was any tape on there. 
this is quite funny because OnlyFans, its whole thing is you have to pay to get this content. Um, and we're going to pay these porn stars and these celebrities a fair amount. He was essentially saying, you know, back then, I'm going to give you free access to these porn sites. And, and so they're not going to get your money, but you'll still get their content. And the fact that you have a majority owner who back in the day, A, has run, you know, these big amateur porn sites was once, you know, courting the attention of pedophiles, essentially, even though he wasn't giving them content. I, I think that really has to affect, you know, what happens when the IPO? Still a lot of stuff we don't know about him. He's still a bit of a mysterious figure.